When it comes to music production apps like drum machines, synthesizers, effect plugins and DAWs, there doesn't seem to be any shortage of them on iOS. However, on the Android side, well, the selection isn't that wide. It's actually quite narrow. And for six years, I've kept seeing the same question pop up from disappointed Android users asking why do these app developers keep pushing out apps for iOS but not for Android? Well, if you really want to know, then stick with me. I used to be an Android user, but I switched over to Apple and iOS. I'll give you the reasons why, and I'll also tell you what developers have told me about their choice of just coding for iOS and not for Android. Hello and welcome to Hack Attack. My name is Jakob Hack and you're watching a, um, I don't know if it's a vlog or an actual episode. It's, just, it's a video. It's a Hack Attack video. Okay, so without counting uh, my blogging days, I've actually been doing music apps, tutorials and demos for the past four years. Now, I've actually been using iDevices such as the iPhone and iPad for longer than that. It's actually been seven years now. And before that, I had Android. I had an HTC Wildfire, one of the cheapest Android phones you could get. Now, the reason why I chose that Android phone was I couldn't afford an Apple device and I couldn't afford one of the more expensive Android phones either. And after using that Wildfire for a little while, maybe just a few weeks, and after browsing the um, Play Store, well, I just realized I had made a mistake. I should have saved my money and just get an iPhone or something. But there I was. So I did find an app called Uloops and today it's called Pocket Band. I've talked about this before. It was a very fun app to work with, but uh, there were no way of actually connecting apps to one another. And there still isn't today. There still isn't something like Audio Bus or InterApp Audio or like ARM or Cubasis where you can load up these plugins into that and these apps into that. And so every app becomes a little island on Android. And you know, that might work for some people, but not for someone who wants to do some more serious routing and get some more out of their mobile music production experience or whatever. And so why is this important? Well, it is important, especially when you as a developer have to choose which market you want to work under or work on or in. I don't know how to phrase that really, but you have to choose a market. And the most logical thing to do would be to choose the market that has the biggest potential for you to be successful in making music apps that people want so that you can make money so that you can feed yourself, maybe a family, pay the rent, you know, all of those things that we also want to do. And unfortunately, little Android here has a problem. You see, Android here doesn't have a standardized protocol for for MIDI and audio. Yeah, I know, little buddy. I wish you did. So what is the problem exactly? Well, I've interviewed a lot of app developers and even hardware developers d dabbling with app development. And they tell me that it is possible to make an inter-app audio protocol uh, or something like AUM or Audiobus for Android, but it wouldn't hold for that long. And it's hard because, well, the problem is the hardware. You see, Android is just an operating system, just like iOS, but iOS is being made by one company, Apple. And Apple have a certain standard to the type of hardware that they use in all of their models. So it's kind of easy, developers tell me, to code an app to fit all of the models and even between models over different years and, you know, stuff like that. Well, Android, <sighs> Android is being used by several 
companies. Not only that, there are several versions of the Android operating system out there too. Uh, and then there is no standardized format for the hardware. Every company makes their phone or their tablet differently from another company. So you have a varying degree of latency issues, which is an apparently bad issue to have when you're doing music apps. And on top of that, the huge variety in screen sizes doesn't really help. You know, this thing about Android not getting music apps is something that was predicted some time ago. And I found this. It's an article on Synthopia posted back in 2013, and it lists all of the things I just talked about. Now, this was back in 2013. Now it's 2018, five years later, and these problems still exist. So think about it. Could you even imagine the nightmare it would be for a developer to actually do stuff on Android, to code apps, music apps, particularly for Android? I mean, they pretty much had to go out and get a phone and or a tablet from every company and maybe even several models just to be able to test if their apps are working properly. When we have a look at the Android models, sizes and shapes for the screen, I mean, it's just a nightmare. Just that thing, making your app fit the screen. Yeah, the Android platform really isn't optimal to code music apps for, but iOS is. Apple pretty much used the same type of hardware in there, same type of processors and RAM and everything. You have a pretty standard sandbox um, world where you can build in. And now after several years of development of InterApp Audio and the help of third-party developers like Audiobus, the InterApp Audio protocol has become better. We have AUV V3 now be becoming more stable and yeah it's easier to get into especially for new developers due to the documentation being there now and you know it didn't used to be there in the past you know, I wish I could tell you some of the stories I've gotten from some developers in the past, but I, I can't because I don't want to name names because I don't want these developers to get in trouble with Apple. But as I understand it, it used to be pretty horrible trying to code anything for iDevices when it came to music apps and stuff like that in the past because the documentation was horrible or non-existent. So these third-party developers that we've seen like over the years making apps for the platform, they pretty much set the standard for everyone else coming after them now and that's why we're seeing a whole range of great apps being made because it's easier for app developers to get into it which also makes it a pretty good financial option for people who want to code for a living making money making apps so i'm not talking about camera apps or stuff like that i'm talking about mu music production apps particularly and so the market is already there with Apple and uh, yeah, they own that market, own that market it seems, which is great. They own the market, soon they're gonna own the world. The whole thing has just become a four stamp, four strength, leather belt situation. Level 18. Uh -oh. Uh, so sitting down, taking the time, the, the, the year or two years or three years you would need to code, you know, a protocol, standardized protocol with good latency for Android so that apps can be connected to one another and so that you can use external devices might be a big financial mistake. Because as soon as these companies come up with new phones the year after, it just might not work. It might break to the point of not being able to fix it without having to rewrite everything. Now that does happen on Apple too. I mean, Matthew Fesher went through something like that when iOS 11 came, I think, when he coded Synth 1. And yeah, that could happen. That could actually happen. Like any good story, this has a tragic third act, a setback that we'd need to overcome. iOS 11 was released. Start over, once again. Did we have it in us? I say, let's recode it. 
So, unless all of these Android companies making Android tablets and phones will change their minds and start doing their stuff to carry the same type of hardware under the hood, you know, unless that happens, it's going to be incredibly hard for a developer to just try to make a standardized protocol for MIDI and audio. And that's why I don't think we're going to see, I can't say for sure, but I don't think we're going to see a music app world growing for the Android community such as it has on iOS. Now, I want to clarify something because I'm thinking that a lot of people might be thinking, hey, Jacob, you're just an Apple shill. You're just, oh, you just love Apple so much. Then I suggest you go watch this video made by yours truly. It's called Apple Loves Your Money. And it pretty much sums up what I'm thinking about Apple and my experience with Apple products for the past seven years. Yes, yes, yes. I want to thank you so much for watching this video. And thank you so much if you, you know, stuck through the whole thing. I mean, I've been rambling a lot now if you want to help this channel in any way then pressing that thumbs up oh you have no idea maybe you do maybe you do have an idea how much that helps it really helps because when you're doing that you're telling youtube that hey this guy's videos is just the it's the bomb you should tell everyone about that and youtube is going to be like yeah i'll push it out a, a little more like hey hey you there you just watched the video about modulars maybe you want to watch this video about uh, Jacob talking about honey. Uh, you also got the financial options, which I'm extremely grateful for the, all of the patrons that have signed up. You're amazing. And for anyone who might be considering becoming a patron, you're awesome. You're awesome for even considering it, even if you don't do it. Uh, I got a PayPal and I got a Bay, Bay, Bay Camp. I, Bay, 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 Bay Camp. As usual, I wish you a very productive week. Now go finger all of your stuff and have a lot of fun doing it. Yeah, uh, this is Apple, yeah uh, This is Apple, uh, uh This is Apple, yeah Everyday unwanted updates, yeah But why? Oh, you like this bit? Yes We're gonna take this bit Why? Oh, you want this bit? Here, you can have it back This is what you call pro Yes This is what you call pro Yes This is what you call pro Yes This is what we call pro Oh no Here, have some more Dongles Yes, we know you love them Dongles Innovative is the word What? This is what innovation looks like <laughs> Oh, shut your mouth, man Shut it